Hey, good morning, everybody. I wanted to talk about some safe place um, problem solving that we did uh, last Friday, um, because I think it's something that might come up for you, whether you have your safe place now or later. And then there's a couple ideas in here that you can use in different ways. So um, one of the problems that the classroom was having was that the children were in the safe place um, and they didn't want to leave. And they were also playing with the feeling buddies, like playing, playing, like role playing, you know, and not about emotions. So those were two specific struggles that they were having. And um, you know, let me mention too that one of the the first questions um, asked, one of the things that we went over was how they introduced it, and they did everything right, right? They didn't open the center until they went in and practiced with the kids. There are boundaries. So that's all good. That's always the first thing that we want to check is how did we introduce it? Do we need visuals? Did we set boundaries in there? And how are we going to follow through with it? But the first thing we talked about was the feeling buddies, because the feeling buddies, just like the baby dolls for baby doll circle time and Bailey bear and fidgets and they're tools, not toys. That's not intended to keep them away from the kids or not allow them to be fun, but we don't want them to be misused because they serve an important purpose. The feeling buddies, when you put them in a basket and put them in your safe place, they also serve an important purpose. Um, so we don't want to keep them away from them, but we also don't want the safe place to be a place where they go to play. It's a learning center, right? It's a self-regulation center. And that's important. Even if you don't have your self-regulation wall stuff in that box you got up there, that's okay. But that's what the safe place is for. It's not to chill. It's not to relax. It's not for quiet time. It's a self-regulation center. So um, they have a shelf in that area where they keep Bailey Bear, right? We keep Bailey Bear up so that we can help facilitate it. A child could ask for it and we could get it, but again, so it's not just a stuffed animal. So the suggestion was to put the, um, the feeling buddies basket up there. In the beginning, and in the beginning this year for you, for a safe place and for anybody for months, the safe place is intended for you to go with them. You don't have to stay there the whole time. You'll start to recognize kids who can take themselves there on their own, stay in there on their own and, and ask for help when they need it. But we want our safe place to be an extension of us, right? We are the safe keepers. We are the safe place. Now here's another place you can go on your own. So um, because of that, we could have the opportunity when a child asks to go in there or when a child takes themselves in there themselves, we can grab the feeling buddies and then we can say, um, oh, your face is going like this. You look like sad, you know? And if they can verify that's how they're feeling, or maybe they say, no, I'm angry. We can take that feeling buddy, put the rest up and I can say, okay, maybe I get the feeling buddies book out. What do we say to sad? or to angry when we're feeling that way, right? And we can read the book or just remind them, welcome sad, right? And now we're using the feeling buddy as a tool. Um, not leaving um, is a pretty common thing and it's tricky because we don't wanna set time limits on it because not every child can calm in five minutes. Not every child needs five minutes to calm. So it's a slippery slope when we start to um, set uh, time limits on how long you can be in the safe place. But here's the deal. When you see them calm, right? You can see visibly that they have calmed. We're gonna check in with them and see if they're ready to come out. And if they're not, then that's when I'm going to use a timer and I'm going to give them a choice. I'm going to say, do you need two minutes or five minutes in the safe place? They're probably going to choose five and I'm going to say, okay, you've got five more minutes in the safe place. Here's your timer. When this timer's off, I'm going to come back to you and it will be time to leave the safe place. You did it. You came in here, you breathed. <sighs> you calm down and now you've got five more minutes and I'll be back. Okay. 
right? And then we'll move on. We'll come back. We'll take them out. Um, so that would be my biggest suggestion with getting them to go out. Now, when you come back, are they always going to be like, okay, my time's up right now? Are they going to be like, my time's up, I'm ready to roll? Some of them will. Some of them won't. Um, at that time, um, you know, we don't want the safe place to feel unsafe because I'm going to drag you out of it, right? You're done. That's that's going to not make the safe place a great place to be if I can only be, uh, you know, if I get dragged out of there by my uh, safekeeper. So um, here would be my suggestion, um, you know, because is there anything wrong with letting them stay in there for a little bit longer? No, but again, it's not a place to just relax. And in this particular classroom, what's interesting is when they're calm and when the teachers are prompting them, it's time to leave. The kids are saying, no, I'm anxious. I'm angry, which is amazing because it is a testament to how well they have taught them the words and the, the purpose for the safe place. So it's pretty brilliant that they're doing that. Um, but we set limits and boundaries for the safe place, right? And so we're going to follow through with them. So when I come back and I say, oh, you, you're not ready to leave. This is hard. Your five minutes was up and now it's time to go. If you're still upset, you can have some time with me. I would, you know, sit with you or whatever and read a book. And then you're going to remove them. You're going to scoop them up or say, would you like me to hold you or hold your hand while we go? And then you'll safely and kindly remove them from the center. Now, what if they get upset? Um, they might, and then it's going to look like they should go back in the safe place, right? Because this is a place for us to like self-regulate. No, then you're the safe place. And then you just keep breathing and you download your calm and you say, that was really hard, but you did it. Hold your boundary, right? Hold the consequence, not punishment, the consequence, and it will work itself out. You're going to have to stick with it for a minute so that they learn that when five minutes is up, five minutes is up, we're done in the safe place. I can go back later if I need it, but right now my time is up. Um, one of the kiddos, there was a very specific fidget that they liked in that center. And that's what was really difficult. They were going there. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure actually, uh, or I don't remember if the child was genuinely upset, went to the safe place and then, um, got the fidget and didn't want to leave. It was like one of those tubes that you squeeze and it moves, you know, it's kind of hollow in the middle. Anyway, um, the child really liked that one. And so when it was time to leave the safe place, because they were calm, they would become upset because they didn't want to leave that fidget. But the teachers are also working on keeping the fidget in the place, right? It's a tool. It's not something. Um, and in case this, in case you think of this, the tools, um, they do have fidgets. They have a basket of fidgets in their circle time. Um, and they are tools for circle time. So we didn't want to mess with that. That was working well. Otherwise, my suggestion might have been just put a basket of fidgets somewhere in the classroom that they can grab and use anywhere as long as they put it back. But they've got a system that's working, so let's not mess with that. Instead, we're going to remove that specific fidget in there. You don't have to have a fidget in your safe place. But in this classroom, they have um, 12 of them, 10 or 12 of them. So they're going to put that style of, of a sensory thing. Because if you have a child who doesn't want to leave the safe place because there's a specific um, fidget that they want, it's meeting something. It's doing something for them. It's, it's filling a need, Right. They don't do things for no reason. Seems like it to us because it doesn't always make sense, but she's not playing there. She's not playing with that for no reason. It's meeting a sensory need for her. So they're going to put a basket of them in their science center. And so now she'll be able to go into the science center at any time when centers are open, the science center is open. Um, I don't believe there's a time limit on it. So if she wants those at any time, she'll have the opportunity to have it. And then they can set the limit here. You know, this may, they may not care if she walks around with it, but if they do, then the limit is you may play with these in the science center. This is where 
we keep the squeezy or whatever it is. The last thing I want to mention is, um, and uh, I saw a video the other day about this therapist that I follow on TikTok, and she had this really cool um, idea she was talking about where she called things, it was like play therapy. She called them green zone activities, and they were activities for when you're calm. And I was thinking about this weekend that that seemed like such a cool idea in thinking about this issue where the child may be calm. Now I'm going to take you out of the safe place and you're not going to be calm. So now I'm going to be your safe place so I can still hold the limit at the same time connecting with you. Um, and it was this. So I thought of that green zone box she had. So I made my own. I went to the Dollar Tree and I bought this dollar um toolbox. I used my Cricut to put a thing and you know, you could put green zone. After I did these, I thought green zone would have been cool because executive state is green, right? Green zone, green active. Anyway. Um, so I put a lock on it because I thought, you know, kids really like that stuff. So that might be something special. So I might pull her out. I might grab our box for some you and me time right? And then um, let them take off this lock. And then there are just a few activities. And I would put a five minute timer. I have a, a little bag of five minute sand timers. So let me know if you need one and I will send one your way. But in here, this is what they could choose from. We could do it together. This is time together, right? They could do, we could do Play-Doh. So we could each um, squish Play-Doh. I put these little stuffies in here. These are those little Zoom Zooms. They actually had these at the Dollar Tree, Disney ones. So um, we might pick these and do I love you rituals with them, or maybe there's another game. Maybe it's just role playing that you could do with them. Um, hand massage. Uh, obviously um, get a safe lotion and then send a little note to your parents to sign to say, hey, we're trying this, um, this idea and uh, one of them is a hand massage or maybe we'd like to do hand massages uh, possibly before nap time. This is what we'll be using. Um, a baby lotion would be great. Uh, an all natural lotion would be the best. Um, an all natural baby lotion that's like lavender scented uh, would be amazing. Uh, but I was at the Dollar Tree, so this is what I got. So you could do a hand massage, they might choose. Um, this uh, woman had some sensory brushes in her kit, um, but I bought a makeup brush. Um, a face scrub brush and a baby hair brush. So you could do sensory brushes on their arms or on their face they might like, right? So you could, they might choose that. I have some fidgets in here, right? Different fidgets that we could play with together. And this is the last thing I have. So this is powder. A tiny one would be better, but here's the game. You put a teeny bit of powder in their hand. This is going to be all over my black sweater for the rest of the day. Um, you put a teeny bit of powder in their hand, in their tiny hand, right? And then they close their eyes and you take a pencil, you know, or a Q-tip or something, and then you can draw something in their hand. It's got to be pointy. I just wrote on my hand. It's got to be something in their hand and they can try to guess. They're three to five. They're probably not going to guess. You could do this with older kids too. Um, <laughs> anyway, but then they can see that it was a heart. So, you know, the game where you might say like, I'm going to scratch your back. What do you think I'm writing? Then they can actually see when they open their eyes. <sighs> um that's what I can use my makeup brush for. So green zone activities or a special box to do when it's just me and you. And if you're feeling like, oh, well, then they're always going to cry because they're going to want time with me. Um, remember that that's our anxiety. That is not a problem. You can find a few minutes, maybe don't use a five minute timer, maybe use a three minute timer and do one of these activities with a kiddo. Um, you know, if we start, if we have those kids who are 
attention seeking because this is what they need from us. We just need to give it to them before they do the, the behavior to get it. Did that make sense? If it didn't, let me know. I would love to explain more. Um, so if you try this, um, tell us so that we can see what you put in it and what it looks like and how it works. You can get a really fun um, keychain to put on your little lock. You don't have to lock it, um, but you can make it something really fun to do together. And that might um, solve problems in other areas just uh, other than the safe place. So, um, if there are any other things that you are dealing with that you want some answers that we can talk or I can make a video that everybody can see uh, and reference later, then please do let me know. I'm happy to do it. Have a great day, everybody.